Behind the Counter is brought to you by Audible.com, the internet's leading provider of audiobooks with more than 100,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature. For a free audiobook of your choosing, go to audiblepodcast.com slash Andrew. And by Stitcher Radio. Listen on the go via the Stitcher mobile app. For more information, go to stitcher.com slash GFQ. All right, hello and welcome everybody to another awesome episode of Behind the Counter. I'm your host, Rich Stambolin, and with me as always is the man who will be playing Steve-O in the upcoming Steve-O biopic, Jonathan Adler. Hey, dude. (laughs) (laughs) It's not hate, it's yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah, bro. Is that how you won the audition? Yes. (laughs) Hey, dude. He's just like him. It's like, look look in the mirror. Uh so, uh, as I was saying before the show, we killed Bin Laden, and we're here now to talk about comic books. Schwarzenegger. We are members of uh, SEAL Team 6. We are. Bags out of the bag. In uh, video. <laughs> I hope nobody believes that. This <laughs> is what we do now. I've been watching these guys each week, and my God. <laughs> They're heroes. Kill Bin Laden. And murderers. <laughs> Hero murderers. You can get away with that kind of thing right now. So, what's going on, bruh? You know. You know what's going on. I know. Bioshock <laughs> came out yesterday, turning into a zombie. Yep, that's it. This is the first, uh, no, it's not actual real light. This is more na- unnatural light for me. Yeah. Uh, speaking of zombies, I was in Central Park the other day um, looking at a wedding venue and everybody was gathered around the Imagine John Lennon stuff and there was one bum. There was maybe like a crowd of 60 people uh-huh. and there was, and it's just like a, like a small thing that yeah. says Imagine on it. There was one bum who was cursing. <laughs> you know, this guy was cursing his mouth off like, you guys are zombies. You guys are already dead. You're already dead. You're already dead. And he kept going on and on and on about but, it. There's a lot more cursing in it, too. Maybe it was John Lennon. I passed by this guy, and I couldn't. I chuckled right at his face. Like, Maybe he's right. Yeah, you got it, bro. <laughs> Maybe we're already dead. Yeah, it's true. We're in the Matrix. Uh, <laughs> or we're in Bioshock. That's much better. So... In one word, your review of Bioshock Infinite. Awful. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> uh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, I got mine today. It's in the car right now, yeah. actually. So, You're going to oh. punch the uh, lady in the mouth and uh, knock exactly her out. exactly go, what I'm going to do. Go hard over the night. I'm going to give her a big boot when I get home. <laughs> the very satisfying. Maybe experience. a leg drop. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, big leg. I can take a bump, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Never and say, oh, I can take a bump. Um... Very good. Did you watch Walking Dead over the weekend? I did. Of Honestly, uh, probably my favorite episode of the season. Not the best episode to begin with. My favorite episode of the season. Two reasons. One, uh, Merle. Two, Motorhead. The Motorhead was <laughs> awesome. I knew you were going to appreciate that. <laughs> As uh, in the band? Yeah. Oh. They didn't show up on it, but there was but one. But they did. There was, did. Did you watch it? Do you watch it? No. Well, I mean, watch I, it. I've given up. He doesn't watch television. I don't watch TV. There's one bit where one of the characters, Merle, uh, lures zombies to the car by blasting Motorhead. What song? Um, Ace of Spades? No. no uh, uh, I remember. One, uh, one Night Stand, I think. You should have played Godsmack. No. God that, forbid. That would have made them go. Um, Didn't you play for them? I did play for <laughs> Godsmack. That would have made them walk away. Yay, yay! <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> Why are you holding that bat? I don't know. I was trying to keep the dog away from you before. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> so violent. You did kill Bin Laden. I did kill him. I am. Uh, so uh, I, like, I like the episode a lot. I'm, I I'm, still think the, the Morgan episode was better. The Morgan episode was really good. I like this because it was like, you know, finally, like it kind of justified my Merle stuff where I was like, you know what? He's going to do something really cool this season. I like Merle. I really wish he didn't have to go. I'm glad he goes. he's gone. I'm, I got my fill. What's up with um, Daryl's really chic haircut? Oh, he looks beautiful. Uh, I hate it so much. <laughs> That's one of the things I hate. Like everybody's so clean. And the cars are clean. And Vicky was like, uh, my fiance was like, uh, you know, they have like showers in the bathroom now, so that's why everybody kind of looks like clean. You know, I'm like, that sucks. I want them more dirty. They're not dirty enough for me. Where are they getting the water from? Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, yeah. Well. A well. Well water. There's always well water. Middle of the prison. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's also one There's of my- There's probably a zombie in that well water, just like the first time. That was one of my favorite bits on the show, I think, of ever, like the big, big fat, fat zombie. zombie just like in the bottom of the well. Uh, you I know what I was thinking when they did that? Steep and drink in that water. Yeah, that zombie goop. Yeah, we're all gonna be zombies. Disgusting. Uh, but I don't understand. Like, I I understand. I mean, 
you want somebody nice if if he's the most popular character on the show obviously you're gonna make him better looking but like i don't get that goo goo doll's haircut that they strap him off. with I, man. I, he's, I don't think he's ever looked like cool yeah like the poncho goes as far as i go but like the the leather jacket with the angel wings on it it's not even a jacket it's Not like so a much. vest with like yeah. denim underneath yeah and something else on it. it's like a three-piece i was looking at the other day i was like it's like a three-piece jacket it's kind of weird uh <laughs> but it was it was a decent episode did I you hear the video game came out the uh the first person shooter was it good did you i heard it's the worst it? game that came out this year next to uh aliens that sucks because then they do like another crappy walking dead game and there was one there's the one good one that's the download yeah um there's the one that you actually buy on disc which is the first person shooter i think there was like another one too that wasn't that great I want to say there was three so far. Uh, like a really maybe. ham-fistedly put together game. This was a very ham-fistedly put together game. Yeah. This was like a game that could definitely not be on Xbox, but be on your phone. Right, right. And yeah. it could be like an actual decent game then. Yeah, But yeah. It's supposedly awful. Um, game. Telltale is putting out a Fables game starring uh, Bigby Wolf, man. I'm all about it. Yeah. I'm all That'd about cool. it. Speaking of which, they, uh, I read a little bit of news from uh, Gene Ha, because now he's trying to get out of his exclusive contract, and I didn't even know he had <laughs> an exclusive contract, because... He did what two books? Yeah, yeah. While he was there, um, he was like, "Oh yeah, you know, I really want to get out of this. It's I, I'm really desperate to do top ten again, which is like weird. That's it's a like, big hell, yeah. It's like his product for now. Him <laughs> and uh, Zayn Cannon. Um, and then, but all the top ten stuff is really good. It is. No, yeah. I like it. I definitely like it. But I wouldn't say like it's his project. Yeah. I mean, Al Moore won't go near it anymore. But you know, he's still had a hand in it. Yeah. Uh, his top, top ten is amazing. But he was going on about uh. How he's really unhappy with DC. I was like, oh, here's here we go. Here's the like the, mm-hmm. the thought provoking insight into what's going on in editorial. Yeah, and he just basically was upset that they're not doing Angel and Ape at uh, <laughs> DC. <laughs> I'm like, what a bust! Awesome. Uh, yeah, we're not we're not gonna get those stories, man. We talk about this every week. We're not gonna get like a couple of years down the line. We're gonna hear like the horror stories of like. And then Jim Lee poisoned all our drinks at one <laughs> meeting. Um, Dan DiDio actually. Uh, I don't know. I can't. It would be extreme if it came out. Get sex with a pig at the career summit in front of us. Uh, this is what you get. I think you made that joke before. And it's still funny. Second time around, it's, it's I will funny. always use the the pig banging. The pig banging. <laughs> uh, Vikings was excellent this oh, week. Oh man, you know what? That really. <laughs> I think the last few episodes really put over the top for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was so so good. You know why I know? Love it? me some Floki. You know why? Uh, you know how I know it's so good. Uh, fiance won't go near it now. <laughs> <laughs> really? It. Why? Was, I was like, yo, we gonna watch. Uh, she was sick the other day, and uh, you know, like she was, she stayed home, and I was like, oh, you want to watch this? She's like, all right, go cool, and make some food, and we'll watch Vikings. Uh, we we're like two episodes behind, so I put on like the the first episode, and like in the middle of it, it's like it's her on her phone. That's like I'm like, you're not into it, and she's like, I think I'm gonna do the dishes. Like, all right, so she comes back. It's and all then, fighting and reaving. Then the other episode starts, and she's just like. Nah, like go for it. And I like cracked open a couple of beers. It was like, this is friggin' awesome. It was like a metal song. Yeah. It they was. get to the beaches and they fight the dudes. But I think it, the uh, <laughs> Ragnar went over the top for me. Like he became like a really awesome character. Yeah. When yeah. he uh, when he did that thing, he's like, like, do you want to live? He's like, yeah. He's like, he just shakes his head. I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think he's going to, I think the reveal is going to be that he's part God. Well, the the story the story of Ragnar Lothbrok is mm-hmm. that number one, he's eventually become the uh, the king of Denmark. Okay, and he fought the snakes, which is like a big thing. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. and he was eventually killed by snakes, but he was he believed that he was the son of Odin. Yeah, yeah. But he's one of the the gods. I think the gods are going to come into play, and that's kind of also why I like the show a lot because you know you get that a really cool interpretation of Odin that happened in like the first couple episodes. Yeah, where he's like he looks like Gandalf with yeah, two ravens. <laughs> yeah, uh, Floki's awesome. Floki's really good. Yeah. Uh, the Grant Morrison of Viking era. <laughs> it's a good show. I know it's not comic book related, but it kind of is at the same time. We know it. I kind of realized why it became really good because, like, I, I was having trouble with the show because it was trying so hard to like uh, bring the intrigue of Game of Thrones into like the Viking world, mm-hmm. and I just kind of wanted to see like dudes go on a boat, get off the boat, and kill people. Mm-hmm. And you definitely get that like oh, by yeah. the third episode. But it's it's <laughs> taking those best moments of like all those history channel like you know specials where mm-hmm. you just see five if they had a viking special you see just five seconds of them like going on and like a lot of clanging and you're like yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want to yeah. see more of it but now they have a bit more budget you can actually that's all you see now yeah. and his br- his brother is friggin awesome yeah 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 <laughs> Rolo, yeah, <laughs> Rolo. <Rallo. laughs> uh, it's such a good show. It's so it's so ridiculous. Like I'm so into it, and uh, 
It's an Amon Amarth song, basically. It <laughs> is. The entire, the entire series is an Amon Amarth album. Then they're on the stairs. Which I like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, and I think also that's why um, the girl is just like, like, eh, you deal with this. <laughs> I'm not into I'm it. I'm all about it. My mom loves it. Yeah? She loves Vikings. Vikings and, uh, and mummies. <laughs> things. <laughs> Some people have like those kind of things. Like uh, a lot of people like are like surprising vampire fans. I think they, I they can't like they like everything. Oh, I just love vampires. Yeah. I love Twilight. You know, nobody will admit it though. Uh, we got any news this week or no? Nothing, right? Nothing. Kind of slow. I tried to scrape through and there was really uh, a whole lot of blah. Yeah. We had an email actually. Uh oh. If you want me to. Uh... Can you read you. it? Can you read it on the air? I don't have it. It was a very simple question. <laughs> they said they're not a comic book fan, but watching Too the bad. show, they want to they want to get into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, if if somebody was just to come to you and tell you, I want to get into comic books, what should I read right now? What would you give them? Manga. From current, <laughs> yeah. don't listen to uh, John. Cur- something that's happened currently and something that happened in the past that would get them to <laughs> love <laughs> comics. <laughs> That's a good question. All right. Uh, it's, we used to get that in the store all, all Every the time, day. too, of like, I want something old, but I want something new, new and blue. What do you think? <laughs> I would say, I hope we, what we do, we used to always do, Walking Dead. These are my questions, too. <laughs> <laughs> Walking Dead, Watchmen. Preacher, if they were Preacher, old enough. Preacher, if they were old enough for it. I guess uh, everyone wants X-Men, right? Everybody always wants X Men, but the, I feel like the that those are our go tos now, and like the list of like the old has expanded. Powers, I'll throw on that list. You always threw powers on there. We um, never saw powers. Powers, Sandman. Yeah. Um, if they're a girl, I always recommend Fables. Yeah, yeah. Fables kind of transcends. What was that DC one where she was a lawyer? It was a female superhero, and she was a lawyer. Manhunter. 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 That book rocked. That was yeah. good. I have a bunch. That's a really good book. As far as like now goes, like, what do you think? As far as now. Wolverine and the X-Men, Daredevil, Guardians of the Galaxy, Batman Incorporated. Yeah. Batman. Yeah, like all, like the, the, the new Batman run, definitely. Um, BPRD, if they want something. Uncanny Avengers. Uncanny X-Force, definitely. Black Beetle. I don't know if I'd recommend it. No, I'd I, recommend it. It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool, but if they, you're, you're, they're choosing one book like, off the shelf. I want to read comics for the rest of my life. What is the thing that's going to open that door for them? That key. Yeah. Ooh, Walking Dead. It's pretty good. Yeah. I, but no, it is like Walking Dead. It, they have the TV show. They probably had some exposure to it before. When mm. I recommend Walking Dead, it was because they it, there was no other you know cultural touchstone that they can go to. That's true. Yeah. So what now, do you think the experience is like when someone like watched Walking Dead on TV and then picks up the book? They would hopefully feel the way I do and just immensely disappointed with the television show. You think so? I mean, I would I, hope so. I think because you read the book first. I think it's different. I think people. I have come across people who've done that, and they've made the mistake of using the book as a guideline, saying like, "Oh, now I know what's going to happen on the show." Yeah, but at midway through season one, you know that's not the case at all. Uh, Revival. I think I don't know if you ever read it. I think it's I would throw awesome that in there. Book. Revival is good. Yeah, I'll throw that in really there. Really solid book. Uh, I would always say Invincible. I think the first like two trades of Invincible are incredible and really cheap. Spurs fan eighty five. What's the best show on TV? He said, "Best show on TV." Uh, best show on TV. It wasn't a question mark. I think he was commenting on what we were talking about. Oh, Vikings. Yes, <laughs> but the best show on TV is still not Vikings. It's uh, either Breaking Bad or Game of Thrones. Uh, Mad Men. Mad Men too. Yeah, it's gonna be an awesome season. Yeah, good. I don't know what we're gonna do about that WrestleMania party. When is it? Same day as uh, same day Mad, as Mad Men. Pff, no WrestleMania for me, bro. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And, yeah, they had a Game of Thrones and freaking and uh, but it's, they're on at the same time. Mm-mm. Yeah, my TV all that stuff. Yeah, you can go into the bedroom again. Uh uh-uh. uh, <laughs> I'll just be there that's for last time. I'll pies. be there for Undertaker, and that's it. Hey, buddy, I yeah. do want to see WrestleMania though. At this point, yeah. I, well, I sat through Raw this week. You want sandwiches too? <laughs> and pizza. Let me ask you a question, Rock. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, I know. It's not. Let me ask you a question, John McCain. <laughs> I know it's not pertinent to the show, but that part was excellent. <laughs> I, was, I was glued to that. He sw- aging porn star Bret Hart. Aging porn star Bret Hart. Hamburger Dusty Dusty Rhodes. Oh, I was telling I was telling him on the show before how Vicky saw his forehead and was just like, no. He looks like Doughboy from uh, from uh, what's his name, Armzola. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have you seen a worse forehead than that? Uh, Abdul the Butcher. Uh, yeah, but Abdul's are like because he's darker. No, you know what? I, Abby's lines are like straight lines Abby. all the way across. Abby Butcher. Abby Butcher. Abby. <laughs> uh, Devon's are pretty. Devon's pretty bad. Yeah, but Ooh. Dusty's just like it's kind of glaring. <laughs> it's almost like it's keloided on top of like keloiding skin, it's, yeah. and it like hangs over. 
I have a question for you, Dwayne the Rock Johnson. <laughs> I created the eyelids on Pain my forehead. Game looks really good. Is, you, it, is it a good movie? Are you hanging low right now? Number one, <laughs> number two, GI Joe. Yes or no? Yes or no? <laughs> is it good? Because it's been a while and it's been delayed. I follow it very closely. Uh, we can talk about GI Joe the movie. I guess I'm, I'm a big fan of Rock the movie. I have Rock, <laughs> Rock the movies. Uh, I'm a big fan of Rock in the movies. Painting game looks great. Um, what? Painting game. Looks Painting game looks awesome. <laughs> it looks really I, awesome. I read a thing that that um apparently gi joe is terrible yeah i know and Dude, they it's been really, delayed for a year and they to do the 3d yeah and they really want the rock to promote the crap out of it because they're like listen you you're the you're the figurehead of this movie nobody's coming to see uh, he's like i'm saying i'm too busy for wrestlemania like nobody's here to see the other guy who kind of looks like john cena <laughs> you know? uh who should have been duke yeah uh in the first place but the movie's apparently gonna be <laughs> garbage it, it, I mean, but do you expect a good G.I. Joe movie? I do. I, it kind of looks cool. I don't think it could be. You, I think you can physically do a good G.I. Joe movie. You have ninjas. Yeah. You have guns. You have weird characters. Where's Sergeant just, Slaughter? Yeah, fine. Whatever. Like, you, even, <laughs> we, we cast a new Sergeant Slaughter if you have to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you could do so much cool stuff with G.I. Joe, but I don't know. They just want to focus on Bruce Willis's mouth. <laughs> that was him. That's the, uh, that's the trailer. It's like he's in the back of the thing. He's like... <laughs> <laughs> Call me Joe. I'm old. Uh, I want a Thundercats movie. I know. Like, I, I speak for wanna... everybody. I speak for everybody who's like everybody who's gone to the con from New York. At uh, why? you know why? I don't know why. I just feel like like New Yorkers as like, they do uh, want New York does definitely want a Thundercats you know, movie. I don't know why. Like our guys want like a Thundercats wow. movie. Uh, Where would you? What would you do with a Thundercats movie? CGI. No, but I'm saying like what? What would be your, like your story arc for Thunder? Thundercats? It would just it would be the show that they act. They get like trapped on Pangea basically. And build an awesome castle and have an awesome car. And have really the three. I think Don Cheadle should be in the lead role. Is Lino? Is Lino? Yeah. Nah, he'd be a great Mumra. <laughs> he would be a good Mumra. But then you get like the weird mutants, like the the, <laughs> the ape and the uh, whatever sliver. And I would uh, I would put Mike Tyson as Panther. <laughs> That'd be such a hard one to watch. I'm gonna eat you. I, yo, I'm I watch. Eat you, then I'm gonna rape you. Here's, here's another segue. I'm a squeeze too. I love you. The pop culture version, the pop culture <laughs> segment of our show. I watched a uh, an HBO Sports thing today with an interview with Mike Tyson. Ooh, I heard this was really good. Choked me up. Oh my, me too. I've se- yeah. You saw it. Is this oh, the one? Is this God, one? Boy. Who's, this, who's uh, the interviewee? I forgot. Uh, he's like an older guy. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, um, I know I saw the commercial for it. Just like he's gone through so much now. He's a different human being now. Yeah, it, the end chokes you up because it's like he talks about his show. You know, like his yeah, touring yeah. show and how, how much of in debt he Isn't is. Isn't insane that he's doing this? It's insane. Apparently, all that money's going right to the IRS because he owes them over seven figures. Um, so that's like all that money's going to the government. Um, the other part is that there's a part in the show where he talks about how his daughter died on like the um, treadmill. Yeah, I've heard that before. And then you know, like he talks about it for a little bit, but at the end of the like the end of the interview is the the interviewer saying like you know like and then the daughter stuff you said you were a changed man like what happened and he starts talking about it and it goes like kind of like into detail and he's like you know I, it's like i didn't change overnight i went on i went on like a cocaine binge for 10 days and he's like oh you know like what else how were you a different uh mike tyson after that and he gets up and he's like and this is the part that got me like it really choked me up he's like i'm sorry you're gonna have to leave right now i can't do this and then oh. like he gets up and he's like take these take these off me and like they take the microphone off him and he's like standing at the top of his staircase like crying and he's like i'm really sorry i just can't talk about this right now and then like goes to his room and that's how the interview ends and he transforms to a lion and i was like oh my god <laughs> well tyson was sad too yeah the yeah movie, the, the the documentary everything about yeah. my tyson's sad it's like i never raped her look at my hand <laughs> you can't rape I do want to see the show. I do want to see the show for the part where he uh, talks about how he caught Brad Pitt in bed with Robin Gibbons. Oh and I scared him with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'll eat your face off. I'll make love to you and too, Brad Pitt. And then Robin fell off from the ceiling. <laughs> Go Korea. So, uh, I, don't know, I don't know how we started talking about it. I don't know. Uh, Mike Tyson's Thunder cancer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty, <laughs> Pretty excellent. The master of segues. Uh, we should. Uh, do you want to? You want to talk some comics right now, or do you want to go into the bit that we were thinking of, or do you want to do that? Bit talk next about whatever, week? man. Yeah, go loose. Uh, let's talk about. Fire junk. I kind of want to save the origin thing for another time. So do I. I yeah. think we can put a lot of work into that. Okay. Uh, I I st- just still have my number one. Uh, but Superman. let's go. <laughs> let's go with uh, kind of. I wish I saw it coming. Uh, Ultron number three, Age of Ultron number three, this week came out. Um, I had no idea it came out this week. And I read it, but I just <laughs> <didn't get> it <laughs> came out yesterday. Um, 
if you guys have been keeping up, it's it's a future play story in the <laughs> Marvel Now universe, <laughs> and you don't know what happened. You don't know how all the Ultrons destroyed New York City. You don't know why he's bartering for superheroes. All the superheroes are dicks. Um, the all, grounds. Yeah, like all the superheroes are jerks. She Hulk has short hair. Apparently, Luke Cage's family's dead. <laughs> and uh, the question, besides, is it still in canon? Um, you know, it's like how it happens, when it happens, etc. Um, we do get, we do know for a fact that it's not uh, Peter Parker as Spider Man. It's Doc Ock as Spidey. We don't know that. If you read the supplement, what the uh, what supplement? The super uh, superior Spidey. Yeah, but I don't know. This story was written a year ago. Okay. You know that, Age of yeah. Because it doesn't link up. Like, I, I read it also. I thought that was, mm. issue was friggin' awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, I still don't know if that, because it, it, the, the voice is completely different in the... Uh, yeah. I don't think Bendis would ever write Otto Spidey. Well, no, but I think this is the retcon to have it as... Yeah. You know, Otto Spidey. Where, I like, hope Because, like, in the, in, the, in the Superior Spider-Man issue, he's like, mm, better, put the, better put the act on. You yeah. Know, hey, what's up, waggy guy? <laughs> you know, I picture I picture Ock Spidey talking as um, Steve Martin uh, from Saturday Night Live, the Wild and Crazy Guys. <laughs> yeah, I work with that. <laughs> like I'm here, Zim dudes. Zam. <laughs> like I'm here, dudes. Come on, feet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. And everybody's like, "All right, Spidey," because they always thought he was a weird guy to yeah. begin with. They're like, "Okay." Now he's even weirder. Yeah. Like what happened? We must be taking this stress really hard to be <laughs> acting like that. Um. So in this issue, they're debating and Captain America still hunched over a desk through the entire issue. A miserable dude. Uh, but they're they're basically going back and forth and they're debating why Ultron wants superheroes or you know to barter with. Well debate more because you know we still don't know. <laughs> and then like one of the big things was like he is Hank Pym, this and that. He can't break his core programming, which is to want to be human. Mm-hmm. You know, so he wants like comfort or whatever. So they come up with a plan where Luke Cage knocks out She Hulk to barter with Ultron. And the big reveal is that it's not even Ultron at the center of this whole thing. It's a broken vision. Which is awesome. Which I think is really cool. Yeah. And I really feel dumb for not yeah, thinking about it. Yeah, I'm like, of course they're going to have vision in the storyline. Right. Because it's like, you know, like the weird brother yeah. thing. and The the, the, tri- the trinity of uh, Vision, Pym, and uh, mm-hmm. Ultron. Right. And Vision always searching for his humanity and like all this stuff. But... It leaves a lot of unanswered questions, obviously, and it just actually made me more into the story. Mm-hmm. Now I'm like, oh, this is even more awesome because it's not, you know, the th- super threatening Ultron. It's like a facade. Mm. So it's, you know? Yeah, it's calming, the calming voice of uh, a vision. Yeah. I don't know. Like, how, did, how did it make you feel? It made me feel good. It made me feel nice. No, mm-hmm. I felt, it made, <laughs> I, I like the, uh, I like the twist. And I was the same way. Mm-hmm. I, I really couldn't believe I didn't see it coming. Um, Bennett always works in threes, except for, especially for these longer storylines. Mm. By a third issue, you always get a nice big reveal, but I always forget he does a big reveal for it. Um, I still think Pim is still in there some, somehow. Yeah. There's definitely something going on with him. Um, and I've always loved stories where Vision goes bad. Like I love yeah. that the fact that he just like gives up his human personality or he lets that like the evil part of him like really get the best. Right, right, right. Because Vision was like most Avengers, he was a villain before he yeah. joined the team. And a creep. Um, Oh, and a total creep. Yeah. But I think this is more like maybe I, it, there's so many ways you can go with this. Like I immediately thought like, oh yeah, he took over and now he's trying to save his friends. Uh, yeah. I mean, that, that's possible. You know. Well, I think there's there's definitely more to what's going on. I, th- I think we can't just say at this point that, you know, Vision's the man on on top. Right, right. You know, right. I don't know if he'd be on top and make all these uh, Ultrons running around. Galactus. And still, we still don't know why they're superheroes. Like why yeah. they need these superheroes to... Right. Uh, function right he's lonely it's a re- it's a really interesting story and like, it's good this is one of those this is one of those things where you're like all right cool you did it you know like you did a good crossover you didn't really go too super crazy with it because like yeah. marvel like for years marvel was kind of inundating fans with you know civil war siege uh i keep wanting to call uh invasion imposters imposters <laughs> scroll stuff uh no, yeah, this was kind of more subdued, and, I, it, and for whatever reason, they pushed it back for a very long period of time. Mm-hmm. I think this definitely could have happened just a regular in the Avengers book while Banish was writing, but we don't have that luxury anymore. Right, right, right. Th- thankfully, um, so uh, I think it's a, I think it's exactly what it does on the uh, on the package, which makes me happy. Yeah, um, I mean, like I I really dug it. I uh, I kind of want to see where, like, I'm pretty anxious for it. I'm really glad it's not going to get extrapolated over ten months. You know, yeah, it's, like it's moving getting, very quickly. Yeah, it, you're getting like I two think, issues per month, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think it's ten issues altogether. Yeah, and maybe even more than that. There might be like two, three issues per month. Right, it's I think good. it's three issues per month and then a break. 
Maybe. Maybe. Um, it's good. It's a yeah. very solid book. And I also like how, I also really dig, uh, like, the Avengers stuff is good now. You know, you're getting, like, two great Avengers books, and Uncanny Avengers this week, I thought was phenomenal. That was awesome. Yeah. That may be my book of the week. It was, it was really it was really fun. I think so, too. Um, the I love the way that he writes Rogue in this. Yes. Because he's making Rogue actually interesting as opposed to this, like, Hey, Shoga. <laughs> well, so, but like you know, you know, like what's his name? Uh, uh, who's the dude who wrote X Men, X Men Legacy for for so long? Mike uh, Claremont. Well, him too. Mike Carey. Mike Carey. Yeah. Mike Carey loved the Rogue, and he made X Men Legacy into his like game Rogue, Rogue book. book. Yeah, yeah. And Rogue has such a strong fan following, mm. and they made her into this, like Mary Magdalene, like you know, pure saintly she's a whore yes, <laughs> my virgin whore my virgin whore but she's like this perfect like almost Jean Grey like character yeah and yeah. I like her to be like a mess yeah I want her to be that mysterious southern mess yeah that we've all met in our lives and she's you know her clashes with Scarlet Witch and everything is really yeah. awesome I think that was the, the big allure of the character it was exactly what you said like she's like if you if you pictured her in real life she would be like this hot train wreck of a human being that will make you fall in love with her and yep. then just rip your heart out at some point. You well, know? and also her, she was the unpredictable one. Right. Because, you know, she came as a bad guy and then she was, she, she had all these emotional baggage and everything and she also had mm-hmm. like, you know, a whole plethora of, you know, of Supergirl-like powers. Right. Um, But like, I always remember like when, like solidified being why we like the character is when they had that Jim Lee issue, which I can't believe I'm even bringing up a Jim Lee issue. Playing baseball? Uh, no, when uh, she crash lands in the Savage Land and she makes out with uh, Magneto for the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it came out of nowhere. Yeah. And that's a kind of like, I love the fact the X-Men were always the ones that were always unpredictable in their behaviors. Exactly. Yeah, that, uh, that too. Uh, um, That was like, it's such a weird thing to point out because it's completely true where like, you never know where the X-Men are, like what's going to happen because like a lot of X-Men reveals are just like, I have left you field. know, like like Iceman ripping a Bible in half or something, or, you know? Or Dog, or dog Logan. <laughs> like, well, yeah, Dog Logan, something like that. Iceman never ripped the Bible in half, but I'm saying. He they, did. They, um... He did screw uh, Emma Frost, though, for a while. Yeah, like, they do weird, like, weird things happen. Like, weird guys show up at weird places. Um, I like the way Rigmender writes her, too, as opposed to, like, the, sure, sugar, come on over. Mm, I can't touch you. I can't touch you. <laughs> can't touch me either. Not gonna happen. And then Gambit showing up and being like, oh... <laughs> My shari. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's he's Pepper Le Pew. I love you, but you don't love me. I love you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he's totally Pepper Le Pew. He Pierre. sucks. <laughs> Come on, you love Gambit. You know you love Gambit. Uh, you want? You know you want in a, really small doses. A velvet painting of Gambit in your bathroom. I think he's gonna come on Coney Adventures. I gu- I guarantee you, in six months he'll be on that team. I bet you. Uh, oh, my Jedi. I bet you, Remender <laughs> Remender will write the crap out of a game. I got a Hell very yeah. inappropriate question about Gambit that I'm gonna mute the mic and ask oh. you, and we're okay. just gonna see a reaction. All right. Think, think Would that he, work? I think he can get away with it. He, he got away with if it. If he was sealed in, yeah. Okay. <laughs> think about that, viewing oh, audience. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, Remen- Remen- I, lo- I love how Remender writes every single character well, in the book. We were talking about that 90s article, how he's like, he's he's got on a mission to make 90s characters work. Yeah, yeah, which is fine, which is great. Onslaught, um, Venom. Venom. I can't wait for the... Uh, the apocalypse stuff that he's gonna do, oh, or like the baby apocalypse thing. Kang is so in there. Uh, yo, he got such a good Kang. He's getting a lot of crap for making havoc the leader. Whatever, dude. You know, like I don't get that at all, man. Like it's com- people forget why comic books are comics is they're it's, it's completely fantasy that anything could happen at any moment in time. Oh right? yeah, Captain America's head could explode in the middle of an issue, and then you'll get the Infinity Gems to put it back together, and people will complain about it. I yeah. I think I think we're totally gonna get a lot of cool stuff with Havoc. Mm-hmm. Like Havoc is a really fascinating character. Yeah. They made Cyclops into a very fascinating character. Havoc is completely he was a space pirate for most of like yeah. last year. Uh <laughs> he's a wackadoo <laughs> for the most part. Yep. I like that he, word too. Well wackadoo. Wackadoo. He just came out of X Factor with a really mm-hmm. nice run. Yeah. Um he's got a, a lot of like very thick history, and I really feel they're doing <laughs> some interesting stuff with him and Captain America for this yeah. whole like passing the leadership to him. Or it's like Cap wants him to like, yo, give me but orders, man. I, but like, I think I uh, think they're really gonna end up like throwing down against yeah, each other. And yeah. I do, I'm telling you, mark my words, you're gonna see weirdo havoc in like a Captain America type deal, like with a shield and the whole nine. Okay, watch. All right, I'll watch. see. You. I hope they, watch. I hope they give him um, the wacky Cap 
uh, yeah, yeah. Shield. no, I think this. I think it's gonna be something <laughs> like that. I, I guarantee you, he's very streamlined looking now. Yeah, yeah. it's I, like I, I like where they went with it. I one of my favorite havoc costumes was always like the the crazy one, the nonsensical like the sleeve. crap coming out and the little red like jewel in the middle head, like like the sleeve with the hole in the face. For, oh, like, that head, one. And oh, the hair. Did you know what should costume? Yeah, and then he has like the, the jacket, the cool jacket. Yeah. You know, I always like that. I, I hate that. costume. That's when I think Casada was doing uh, yep. X Factor. Yep. I always like that out for some reason. That came straight out of Extinction Agenda. Okay. That was yeah. like they were over, all in Genosian. He was a a pro, uh, prelate, and he right. Yeah. And yeah, he yeah. just basically carried the costume. Oh over. man, I forgot. Yeah, I forgot about that. That's whole a great storyline. Yeah. Uh, so. You know, of Havoc being the team leader also and like people give him crap about it but like he adds such a dimension to the character where like he takes his mask off at the Prince conference and they're like oh no more you, you don't want to be a mutant so what do we call you? he's like Alex how about Alex <laughs> <laughs> <My shitty. laughs> like alright cool your brother's a murderer um, you, have, you have that whole bit and then um, the cliffhanger of Rogue accidentally and like you have Simon you have Simon joining the team again Wonder Man um, which I love which is which is That's awesome, my boy. and he's in the. Uh, I think he's wearing the jacket, right? He was no, like the jacket. he wasn't wearing the yeah. jacket. I feel like he was. No, um, he just leaves. Maybe he did. I don't know. Maybe. I think he's wearing like <laughs> the jacket possible. with the with the stuff on his yeah. on the side. Uh, but he joins the team because you know he he went through this whole thing where like they were the um what were they called the Unavengers the Revengers? Yeah, the Revengers. Yeah, yeah. With that whack that wackadoo team. So he uh he comes back trying to make good, and he's like you know like once an Avenger always blah blah blah, and. Rogue takes some of his power to subdue an attacking Grim Reaper, uh, Grim Reaper and murder. Who has him. to show up if Wonder Man's in the comic? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. As soon as I turned the page and I saw him, I was like, "Where's Grim Reaper?" And he was like, <laughs> "He was right by the mansion." Honestly, also, if you're by that mansion, don't you think there's sensors that like they would be like, "Well, <laughs> that dude popped out of like the crowd, like the, the yeah. journalist uh, pit." That they would have. <laughs> <laughs> that they would have like power signature sensors in the mansion, like hey. Like, you see this? this guy. Like, you see Grim Reaper's like three blocks away right now. Big giant it's scythe hand. Picking him up, you know. The monitor's picking him up. No monitor nope. duty. Um, they didn't pick this guy up, so he gets killed by Rogue. Does the, I'm going to take some of your power, sugar. And then <laughs> kills him. He kills oh. him. And that's how the issue ends. And like, it also begins with Kang and two Apocalypse babies. Yes. And also you had the Sunfire uh, getting recruited by Wolverine stuff, which is very good. A lot of jam-packed stuff in this issue. Well, there, there's a lot of Four Horsemen stuff going on, because Sun, Sunfire was Four Horsemen at mm. one point. Wolverine was, sun, was Four uh-huh. Horsemen. Ollie Anderson was a Four Horsemen. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to join the team. <laughs> muffler. <laughs> My muffler fell out. <laughs> so, um, it was a really solid issue. Who drew it? Copiel. Copiel and somebody else. Awesome. Yeah. Copio is always just a knockout Copio knocked out of the park. He draws one of my favorite Kangs. Yes. Yeah, He absolutely. draws such a dynamic, mm-hmm. like, insane-looking Kang. He makes Kang look awesome. Uh, Ramita does a good Kang, too, but... Not like him. Copio's Kang reminds me of Zod in Superman 2. Yeah. Well, he does... Very you know, regal. You know what he does? He does the uh, the thigh highs. Yeah. He yeah. does, like, he does like the, the, the perfect Kang costume. Mm-hmm. Plus, I like the way the narrative worked, where... It was they introduced him with uh, you know they showed the birth of the apocalypse twins is going to be a big storyline, right. um, and it's going by narrative box. He's talking about pharaohs, and you think it's apocalypse talking about, mm. but then it turns out it's it's Kang, freaking Kang, because he was Ramatut, which is going to be a big part of the storyline. So one. weird, <laughs> it's a great character. We got we got to throw in uh, when we do the origins thing. Kang is definitely going to be Kang is amazing and then, so convoluted. Con- Kang is so convoluted, and also because like he was you have the three facets of Kang, or he was Kang on the Young Avengers. He was he's Kang the Conqueror and then becomes Immortus when And Ramatut. Yeah. Well, before that, and then Immortus when he's like Iron Lad. Yeah. Iron Lad, Ramatut, Iron Lad, Kang, and then Immortus at the end of And possibly his uh a weird some uh weird uh Richard's da- Von Doom connection as well. Right, right. Whether he could it be either Nathaniel or Doctor Doom. Very interesting stuff with Kang, the Conqueror. The Conqueror. Um they did a great, I, I forgot who wrote it, but there was like some really good, I think it was maybe like during the George Perez stuff. Like they did really good Kang. Avengers Forever. With, uh, with his Kirk son. Kusiak. The all this stuff with, mm-hmm. yeah, that was during the, that was during the Perez era, it was, but it was uh, that main series, the, um, with Carlos Pacheco. Pacheco yeah, and yeah. Uh, Kusiak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is awesome. But yeah, they did also really good uh, Kang stuff in the George Perez era as well. Mm-hmm. With his son and mm-hmm. he took the mask off and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. I like that stuff. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy number one also came out this week. Thinking about it. Awesome book. Did enjoy it. Did you like it? I did. I really, the mask thing really bugs me. 
how they changed the uh, Star Lord's mask. Yeah, I like it. Like I did. I think because they went back mm. definitely to the original costume, right? And it looks cool. Um, it's a good solid version. What do you think is going to show up in the movie? <sighs> the costume wise, yeah, so, probably something like this. Yeah, I I, th- I kind of want that the steampunky, like the cool pilot. Well, you know uh, what they did. They want to have an exposed face. They want to, They don't want to completely obscure a character's face, but right. you do it for Spider-Man all the time. Why not this? Yeah, and that spike doesn't really count, though. Why? Because you have equal screen time between both of them. That's true. You do spend a lot of time with that. You know, and like Iron Man is another thing because Iron Man can, like, he always flips his mask up. Always. He just walks around with no faceplate. Yeah. He fights. Um, same thing with Cap. Like, Cap will get, like, battle damage. Yeah. You know? Uh... But you have, uh, what's his name playing? The guy, one of the guys who killed Bin Laden as uh Chris Pratt. Yeah, Chris Pratt. I think we're really going to have the Bin Laden. <laughs> and Star- I'm not digging the uh, that weird Iron Man armor. It's so weird, man. It came out of nowhere, too. It's such, yeah. I, I, it's it's growing on me. I, I think, especially in this issue, I think it's like, yeah. it's supposed to be drawn by McNiven, first and foremost. Right. Um, But it's just odd. Very, very odd. I kind of like the I kind of like, star thing as, as a fa- yeah. It's a little weird as a fan. I kind of like McNiven's older style more than this is a weird. Right it's good. I mean, like it's great. It's awesome. I think like, he adapted himself so he can put out a monthly comic. That might be it too. Yeah, it's definitely scaled down from his hyper detailed stuff he did for like Civil War. Oh, I miss all that stuff. Yeah, you know. But the Guardians of the Galaxy number one is good. This is like kind of like a good jumping on point for readers because I feel like this is going to be a hot book in the next couple of years. Do you read the book and always forget that uh, Gamera is not Drax's daughter? Do you always like sometimes screw that up? Because I always, whenever I know the history of Guardians mm-hmm. of the Galaxy, no, it's uh, Moon Dragon. Uh, yeah, but yeah. for whatever, before because I think because of both green. When I read this, it's now by mm-hmm. default. I'm like, oh, it's yeah, save his daughter. It's not his daughter. Uh, reading this also, I think Batiste is a great pick for Drax's story. He's gonna be awesome. Uh, He's gonna be really awesome. They didn't cast anybody else, right? It's just Chris Pratt and, uh, and Batista. Yeah, so far. I, there were rumors about who's gonna play Rocket Raccoon's voice. Dave Schwimmer. <laughs> I think I'm Sandler. <laughs> really? I think so. Uh, I Get remember. off of my ship! A terrible I, know. <laughs> I don't know what's going for. <laughs> you can do good on I'm Sandler doing Rocket Raccoon. No. Uh, and Groot. Is Groot going to be in the movie? Groot's yeah. probably going to be in the movie. Yeah, whoever you see right now is going to be in the movie. Nah. I think they're going to throw Nova in there too. Yes, I do think so. I feel like. Um, I think Nova's going to be in, I think they're probably, whatever they do with... Um, Angela is going to be in the movie also. Yeah, yeah. The, like Marvel, like this is this is what the fans need to need to uh, watch out for is that these number one, these number ones are coming out right now and kind of lead and like Avengers Assemble this the Thanos stuff. This is all going to be these are all going to be hot books when Avengers two comes out and yep. when Guardians of the Galaxy comes out because these are going to be the go to issues of like th- they're establishing the team that's going to be in the movie. Yeah, and we're starting with a bare bones team. I right. guarantee you it's going to get much larger. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want my Van Tastro. Would you? I want my Van Tastro. What if? What if they did that in the movie? They little. I would love that. They have to do that in the movie. Charlie Twenty Seven. Why would you not? Why would you have Guardians of the Galaxy come out after an Avengers movie mm-hmm. and not do like the Captain America Shield in the future thing? It's so good. I don't think they're gonna go there. It would be cool if they went that route. It would be so so awesome. I th- as a small part, like mm-hmm. if you have Van Tastro show up with the team as like a time traveler mm-hmm. and be like he's searching <laughs> for the searching for the shield for the shield. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Want it. Would he be wearing his long denim jacket? No, he wouldn't be major <laughs> and a, victory. And a bandana. He would not be major <laughs> victory. He would be in the cool blue and white outfit. Uh, or the purple. Who is the uh, who is the bow and arrow guy? We Yandu. Yandu? Yandu. Yandu should be in the movie. Yandu should be in the movie. <laughs> with his with his weird Merle hand. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's true. He does have like a weird yeah, like Merle a Swiss hand. Army Merle hand. Um the trailer also dropped for the Wolverine in uh yeah, the Wolverine cool. this week. It looked Awesome. You know what? The trailer for the first Wolverine looked awesome, awesome. too. No, but uh, I don't know. This, you know, what, know what it was? I think for this, remember there's blood. There's a lot of blood in the trailer. Mm. Um, it kind of looks like everything you want out of Wolverine. Right. Like the dude's getting fights with bars. It's like he's in the snow. He's fighting ninjas. He's got a beard. He's got a beard. And I love his haircut. When he gets haircut in Japan. Yeah, yeah, That yeah. like old school, like the little like wisps coming out. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jackman looks jacked up. He does. Um, like the Viper stuff. Uh, Yokio, Yukio looks mm-hmm. really cool. Uh, Silver Samurai. Silver Samurai, the little bits we get to see. I think it's going to be cool. Yeah, I, I, I'm like so on the fence about it, man. Because like that first trailer sold me on like him jumping at the helicopter and then like him coming out of the thing. Like, and he does the 
the motorcycle thing with the claws. Pretty awesome stuff. <laughs> but then you watch that movie. I remember I watched that movie in the theater by myself. It was, was such like, a piece of garbage. Oh my god, this is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it was such a gigantic piece of garbage. I hope Will I Am. I, I I don't want any cameos in this movie. I don't want my Will I Am. I don't want uh, uh, anybody. If Saber Two shows up again, that's awesome. You know, I would take Puff Daddy. Yeah, Puff Daddy is Mister Sinister. Listen, <laughs> listen, that's an awesome cast right there. That's an awesome <laughs> casting right there. <laughs> Put a little uh, ruby on his forehead, man. That guy looks like Mr. Sinister. Yeah, he would. The black lips. Yeah. <laughs> give, me a, give me a cookie. Uh, we <laughs> also had um, Batman Incorporated number nine come out this week. Ooh, Book Baby Cry. That was amazing. Did it? Yep. It's a great issue, the man. The Bat Cow thing? Uh, it was so upsetting. <laughs> Burnham, Burnham knocked it out of the park, man. Yeah, I think the rumor is that he may be sticking around on the book after Morrison leaves, writing uh, and drawing it. Come with me. Come with me. <laughs> Not yet. I love this issue. Absolutely love this issue. Um, it was just they. Sh- I like the the little bit with the the heretic, the the, the anti Damien, the Frankenstein Damien. Yeah. Uh, and like how how Batman barefooted broke the blade that mm-hmm. killed him. Yeah. It was awesome. It was really good stuff. Uh, I. What do you imagine? Um, crazy evil Batman's voice to be. <laughs> I didn't even think about it. <laughs> uh, like this. Okay, okay, Robin. <laughs> He he so- to me he sounds like Principal Skinner. <laughs> <laughs> I did it, mother. <laughs> I killed him. I killed I'm, him, mother. I'm all the Batman you need now, mother. Uh, <laughs> so gross. <laughs> <laughs> Is he does like it's it's like you want it? It's like a, he's a robot almost, you know. Yeah. Like Damian Beasley. That dude has his eyes messed up so badly in the last few mm-hmm. issues. He got shot in one issue. And yeah. he got like the karate chop to the fucking dome. Oop, my voice. <laughs> Suncast quickly. Added that seven second delay. But he did that, you know, that slice in his in his uh, yeah. his visor, his Robocop right. visor. It's upsetting, man. Like Batman's going on such a tear right now, and like this is such a good issue. But like after like you know, this is the issue after he he, he, he drank so hard. Did he pour some on his crotch? <laughs> yes. Out of the corner of my eye, it looked like he was like. Mm. Uh, but yeah, Morrison knocked it out of the park again, and it's a shame that this guy's not going to be doing any more yeah, Batman yeah. books, man. Until until the DC regime um, realizes it that calls itself, yeah. Until you know they realize that they've had you know their heads up their butts for the last eighteen months. Get your months, heads at the butts, and they're like, listen, come back and do another awesome Batman thing, please. Um, it's a shame too, man, because like I I really like the issue, but I for some reason I felt like it could have been like. A little bit more, like more, you know. Well, I think it's also a little. It's a little weird too that you know this is the official aftermath of the Robin death, mm-hmm. um, but we've had three issues of aftermath already, right? You know, from other points of view that are arguably better than what we're looking at right now, right, right, right. Which is makes it a, an odd storyline. So I feel like this should have come out the week after. Absolutely, I think yeah. they should have waited until this was until this issue came out to actually put out the uh, all those recum issues. Yeah, yeah, like the, Bat- the Batman Robin issue should have definitely come out after this. Oh yeah, absolutely, and even like the Batman issue. Yeah. Um, but it was it was just, if you look at it that way, like in in the finer in the canon of things, then yes, you know when the trades are collected, it makes perfect sense. You know, like keep issue nine. It should have been back to back. Uh, it's so crazy, man. It, it like I I I'm really like upset for Batman. <laughs> yeah, you know? man. It's it's just, this is uh, you know, he's lost Robins before, but never his son. I think that's what makes it really difficult. Mm-hmm. Oh, and the bit with Alfred. He's like, take a vacation. Oh my god! Yeah, you know <laughs> he, you, didn't, he didn't use the Bruce Wayne voice for that. Uh-uh. <laughs> He's like, you know, it's like you let my you let my kid go when you know when I told you not to. Yeah, take a vacation. He's gonna, <laughs> He's gonna, blame. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna blame Alfred. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited about the um, the new Batman sixty six. Uh, oh, me too. Series is coming out. Man. There's been a lot of like old school Batman retrospe- retrospectives yeah. recently. Mm-hmm. I read before I came over. Um, a comics alliance uh, focus on Batman surfs up, which is an old Batman issue mm-hmm. episode when uh, Batman ran on a surfing contest against a Joker. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's so awesome! I totally forgot about the episode, but the sixty six stuff looks so good. Who's the artist that got for it? I forgot, man. Whoever it is, yeah, it the, looks the, amazing. The the preliminary art for it, it looks amazing, yeah. and the figures even look cool. Yeah, yeah, I, I I'm a big fan. Of that. I almost bought a. Uh, they didn't have my size. I found this comic store that was selling uh, New Era. Uh, a Batman hat. I'm not mentioning them because they didn't have my size. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I found them online. They they were selling these uh, limited edition New Era fitted 
Batman logo hats, and one of them was black hat with a red 66 logo, Ooh. like the squiggly bat. And yeah. I was like, oh, I'm buying this. I sent them a bunch of emails. I'm like, Not happy. do you have my size? Do you have my size? And they're like, they're for sale. They're on sale now, tomorrow. I say, do you have this size specifically? Seven and seven eighths. And they're like, they're available on our website now. <laughs> And I was like, all right. So I go to the website finally, and then like every size but my size in that hat. That sucks. The other, the other shitty part about that. Sorry, Suncast, Suncast, <laughs> take care of that one. Uh, the, the other crap part about that was that uh, those hats were sixty six dollars. Oh, yeah. So I saw. I was like, you well, know, thank what? you. Even if they did have my size, it's a little uh, too well, crazy for a, a baseball having to wear once every two weeks. Well, that it makes me feel better about me trying to justify the fact that I'm almost spending a hundred dollars on a uh, a gray sweatshirt with the picture of a bar on it. <laughs> like a bar of soap or like yeah, a bar like the, the elephant king you know the oh babar <laughs> they said a bar no <laughs> i was gonna say like she is it looks really good <laughs> yeah, i'm gonna buy a bar for a hundred dollars <laughs> come in with me that's uh that's pretty interesting who's who's making that uh i'm looking at it's a british company i have to get in, <laughs> i have to pay for like british <laughs> how big how big is the babar is it like a tiny it's little not that big like, over the pocket it's a regular at a babar it's a hold on i'll show it to you, show it to you right now please do um but yeah, it's man. a great looking sweatshirt. Yeah, I'm excited. Like, see, this is, this is the interesting thing. Like, you're getting a book like the the '66 Batman, and you're also getting the. Uh, you're also hold on a second. <laughs> you're also getting. Uh, that's pretty cool. It isn't a good sweatshirt. It's pretty cool. I don't know if I'd pay a hundred dollars for it, man. You know why? Long sleeves. The sweatshirt, dude. I know. Cross it. I know what it is. Cross it, gangster. Um. You're getting that. And you're getting that that Superman book, like the old school Superman book that's written by the racist. Not no, the we're not getting that the anymore. The homophobe. <laughs> we're not getting that anymore. Got canceled? Yeah, well, no one wants to work up with him. Are you sure? Positive. Because no, what's the name dropped out of it, and now it's indefinitely put on hold. Ah, uh, that sucks. But we are getting the Ender's Game uh, trailer this week. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> exciting. Harrison Ford. How exciting. It's cool. Apparently, Harrison Ford's a big homophobe now. He's a huge homophobe. I had no idea. He doesn't watch his own stuff, and he hates, uh, <laughs> hates American Indians really badly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Navajo, Navajo. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty good. I read a funny thing on uh, Bioshock, man. Bioshock's been giving me so much racial humor. The whole yeah, time. such a racist game. Can't wait. Um, not to say that I, you know, like, it's it's a great story. Uh, I saw a funny thing about the uh, the marriage equality uh, stuff today. How everybody on Facebook changed their uh, <laughs> changed their picture to a pink equal sign, and then nobody knows who anybody is anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see what I changed mine to today? No, I changed mine to. Uh, you know, you know the end of uh, Inferno when uh, Scott Summers uh, blasts <laughs> Mr. Sinister yeah. and the whole screen's like pink and they have like the the skeleton falling to pieces. That's pretty good. That's fine. Nice. I got a good idea for uh, for mine later. Yeah, yeah. Black Flag. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that's about that. About does it today. Yeah, we got, right, fi- uh, we got five minutes can left. Can I just mm-hmm. can I just comment on something that has yeah. nothing to do with the show, but. Oh, great. Perfect. I just noticed a picture of us in Blog World Uh that I've been putting on like everywhere as like the network picture. And John is giving the finger in the picture, (laughs) pointing it down. And I've been putting this picture everywhere. Just like that. I've been putting this picture everywhere as the GFQ network. And here's John just giving the finger in the picture. Can you you put that picture on right now? No, I can't. Uh, What do you mean you can't? Can you Photoshop just like... uh, like (laughs) Like a teacup underneath the finger, like he's, <laughs> he like he's staring it. <laughs> I am the face of GFQ. Look, look, look at this. Look at this <laughs> uh, I can't believe you didn't notice that. Man. It also looks that. like uh, Suncast is squeezing one out right there. I think so, Ooh, too. I got show show it to me. Hold it on. I'll show it to you later. Please hold it on. Hold it on. Hold the line, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> hold it next to me. Hold the phone. Oh man! Uh, All right. Game of Thrones this weekend. Can't wait. Return of Jesus and Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. And, the, and also, it's funny that you say that, too, because it is the last episode of the Bible on the History Channel. Of course it is. <laughs> they time Damn, it's, it's, Sunday's crazy they time, right now. Oh, man, Vikings. Vikings, Game mm. of Thrones, and Mad Men. Mm. And then Mondays, I'm watching a really good show on uh, Sundance. Yeah. Top and, of the lake. And also, you're watching a really good show on USA. <laughs> From that? Monday Night Raw. Oh. <laughs> All right, everybody. This has been another episode of Behind the Counter. Uh, thank you for joining us. We will see you soon, because we're going to break into your house later. <laughs> I'm rich. Mon ami. <laughs> <laughs>